Well, Manouche, you see, he was a star in the 50s. He was a star. And he had money in all nationality uh, currency of Europe, you know, just falling out of his pockets. He never saved anything. He had one-man shows all sold out. He was reviewed in Paris so favorably, where one of the prominent guys said, is this a man or is he becoming a god? Leo Castelli introduced me again to Pollock. And Pollock said to me, I had one or two exhibitions at this time. He said, oh, you are yet died. I am an admirer of your art. Jackson Pollock couldn't have said it this way. I am an admirer of your work. He couldn't have said it that way. That sounds like a translation from Persian, but that was the essence of it. He loved Manoush's work. Well, Manoush, um, was born in Tehran. Weren't you born in Tehran? Yes. And you're the youngest child of your mother. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, stop it. You must remember that. And he was a poet. Iran is the land of poetry. Shekarz kist ke qarz migiri. Dar in miyan dast velayat محزون نشونده زمانم را این سو و اون سو در لرزه حراس در منجنیق جنایت چگونه سخن لطیف انشا کنم اسیر سازم که اسیر آه نباشد یا قید حیف 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 But when he was 19 um, he happened to make friends with an artist called Vishkayi so Menush went to sit for him. They stayed up all night talking, and Menush ended the evening in the morning saying, I am a painter. I want to engage all the possible tools. Mm -hmm. Brush, hand, uh, edge of uh, a, a piece of wood, uh, edge of anything, trowel, spatula, Carver, you know, anything, mm -hmm. if it is possible, and brush, and brush, and brush. I think first time I became uh, aware of something uh, different was when I uh, saw an article on Jackson Pollock in Life magazine. And, and that was beginning of uh, introduction to something new for me. Renaissance painting and Impressionist painting is one issue, and abstract painting of Pollock on is something else. Uh, it's not that much satisfactory to me. It becomes a question of fashion, and I don't like it. So I was trying to find a way with that meaning of freedom and to paint some way that to be con uh, connected to the tradition. This is, a, of course, a bowl of fruit with what must be a window in the background and a table. It's 1953 to 54, and you will see it for yourself. And he's using a scalpel, and this is, Yektai is born. There's Yektai. He's been born. I think it's so interesting, because nobody paints like him. Manoush was actually planning to spend more time in Europe uh, when he met me. You were weren't you planning to go to Sweden at one point? Sort of. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do remember. So, um, <laughs> well, if, if you find that I'm misrepresenting you, uh, just uh, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> then I met her, 
and everything changed. I decided to not go uh, to, to Europe mm -hmm. and um, to come back, and uh, I did, you know. And with Nikki, I was there until I don't know, we married at 69. From 64 to 69, we were five years, four years together. Mm -hmm. Well, how did we end up in the Hamptons? Well, Manoush was here. Uh, he visited, uh, what the hell is his name? Resnick. Isn't it Resnick that you visited? Milton Resnick, well-known yeah. painter. That was, and you, you saw Pollock out here and other, other, remember you played poker together? What was really nice about uh, grow, the children growing up and Manoush and me, our family life, was um, our closeness to nature. Uh, we all went to school in the city and, and on the weekends we'd come out here. We lived next to a nature conservancy. It was really, and, and it was with my father, it was a mother who really, they were perfectly matched and they very happy just having picnics with the family. Growing up, you know, I loved it out here, riding my bike around through potato fields and uh, playing on the beach and things like that. This is a theme Manoush does. He does the table with fruit and flowers, you know, and platters, wonderful platters. And then I say it's a window. He likes to say it's a painting. And of course, there's the divine landscape. The goal is to be poetic. Um, that's what my father achieved. It's why that there is a sense of loneliness in a still life that I make. And it's okay that it's an aloneness. And it's like, it's an expression of love. And it's, the expression is that I love the surface of my paintings. I love the brush marks, the strokes. I love the discovery and the story that they tell. I did not want to paint. I did not want to draw. Those things, you know, in my mind belonged to my father. And I didn't want to, I, did, I wasn't comfortable stepping into that, into that world. So furniture was far enough away that I felt I could search for my own identity. And I, you know, I really admire my brother's pursuit because he takes head on what I ran away from. For a long time I had to rail against it because it would be easy for me to just copy him. So I spent a lot of time making sure I wasn't. And I'm slowly now understanding that it's okay because I have, it's, he's in me and you can't remove it. And if anyone has a right to it, I almost have a right to it. Um, but if our paintings look alike now, it's because we select the same artists from the dialogue that existed before. So we both look at Van Gogh and Cezanne and Velasquez and Rembrandt and Poussin, and we pull the same things out of them. I was talking about Darius's work and saying how much I admired it. And then we began talking about his brother, Nico, and I said, of course, and his father. And so then I thought, well, really, wouldn't it be wonderful to have an exhibition with all three? The first thing that I did was when I went into Darius's studio out here, um, I noticed an amazing sculpture that he had done. Sculpture is called The Ascension. And the idea was, as I was making the sculpture, I started to notice that this figure feels like he's being pulled up. So uh, it's like Jesus ascended, Moses ascended, Muhammad ascended, the Virgin Mary ascended, Buddha ascended. All the religions have a sense of ascension. You ascend things in your life. You ascend addictions. You ascend divorce, trouble, strife. Um, so. 
if you're coming up to the sculpture and you are interested in it and want to get a closer look, you take one step up so you've joined an ascension. The pieces of wood are the leftover pieces from my brother's furniture. So you wouldn't really, I mean, you could create these shapes, but it would be very hard to make these shapes to then sculpt with them. So it's, it's so much nicer that I, I get all of his pieces and he has such interesting wood. <clears throat> this uh, painting over here is a, after Rubens is Three Graces. It's a uh, traditional subject, but it's a contemporary painting now. And those are drawings of the Three Graces and it's relief sculpture ultimately. It's painting, it's, it's oil on resin, but uh, the resin has been kind of fully painted now. So it's just a painting that went through a lot of stages. I can show you uh, a few things in process. Um, this is what I'm working on. And you know, I use scale models to kind of convey what I'm gonna do and to figure out how to build it. Um, this is the piece for, for Guild Hall, which is going to be um, a rather large bench that can be um, presented in a, in a number of different ways. Once I have that framework, I can set up that curve, set up its corresponding one, and then reevaluate and begin to compose these other components. Take this big sloppy pile. And with Minutia's, I just went through and did a selection. There's a wonderful portrait of, that he did of Darius. There's a portrait that he did of Nico, and there's a portrait that he did of Mahan, and they're amazing. And what he, I learned, you know, when he was doing my portrait, that, you know, he felt almost trapped by likeness the first time, and then the second time was just much more free. And you can see that in the paintings he's done of my sister Mahan, who he painted you know, four or five times, and you know, really just terrific paintings. Uh, Mahan, she is uh, Darius's twin. She lives in Maine, very talented and with everything she touches. I was a boy-girl twin, and my mother is a twin. My mother's twin has twins. My mother's brother has twins. Uh, my mother's an identical twin, so there's two of her. That's me and my twin sister. Let's see if you can tell which is me. You'll see twins there. We always dressed exactly alike. It's Nikki. It's not Mahan. I'm quite sure it's Nikki. I don't know what year that is, though. You know, every, not every time that he painted her did he feel beholden to her image. So there's some paintings that my mom sat for that don't he wasn't going for likeness. The nude upstairs, wonderful nude. That's gonna be in the show, and I'm so glad because the flesh is nice in it. And here's the painting. When I like the way Manush does um, uh, the skin. My mom is a writer and an illustrator. For years, she was writing and she would illustrate these, you know, sometimes just a few word picture books. Eventually, one got accepted. And this is Sag Beach, Bears at the Beach, counting 10 to 20, of which there are no books. There are books counting 
1 to 10, but not 10 to 20. Isn't that a good idea? Now, I dedicate it to my older brother, Elian N. Kolokundis, who is very good at counting. Where that field joins there is so divine. You, if you don't mind taking a detail of, of this, where it meets, it's so mysterious. You know, it doesn't just happen. It's not easy. Because painters who paint thick usually have no light in their work. Manouche doesn't do ordinary light and shadow, but there's light in the paint. It was through watching her revere his work that we all learned to revere his work. When it is, when it is finished completely for you and you have really gone there, it should, when it is beginning to look at you and talk to you, it should be engaging, it should be, it's the moment of that picture to talk to you, mm -hmm. it's the moment that you become learning, he, that, it, or whatever you want to say, or he has to have enough to teach you. Enough to hold you, enough so you turn back and love it, and then slowly move toward another battleground like that. Mm -hmm. When my father was before the strokes, he was you know, a really integral part in my development as a painter. I wasn't receiving um, the outside attentions that an artist needs to go forward, but he saw it. And it's like I was his favorite painter, you know. It's like it's like Cezanne, Velasquez, and me. It's like and Nico. What was the great surprise for me is um, contemporaries of my father wanted to see, you know, what his kid was up to, and so I, I I had a really unusual situation for a first show of having, you know, the international artists of the Hamptons come out and check my work out from day one. And I didn't think that I would be accepted by any of them. And the great shock to me is that they embraced what I was doing right away as art. Manoush, like many other artists who could afford, had an antipathy to the gallery system. He didn't like uh, galleries, and I can't blame him. And for some reason, I seem to have been an exception. He stopped showing and selling in the 80s, early 80s. The National Academy of Arts and Letters sent him a letter to induct him, sent him like 30 years in, in a row and never responded to any of it. I really feel like people will discover his, his late paintings, which are his best paintings. I'd say it's almost miraculous the way he has suddenly been recognized. You realize that one of his paintings Last year, the year before, sold in Tehran for $450,000. So his paintings have suddenly emerged in, in the art market. Now, because his price has gone way up, he can probably get any gallery he wants. And, and actually, the boys want him to, and at least they're going to make an attempt for that, because it's time for him to be promoted. Nothing has been done about his work, but as I said, we haven't had to sell. Obviously, if we had to sell, wouldn't we? We'd have to. It's okay to live, and you can be yourself. You can express yourself, and that humanity isn't lost. I mean, it's really hard to see where those moments come through painting, but it's not any one painting. It is the act of painting. It's a lifetime and a pursuit. And it comes with sacrifice. And it's its own spirituality. And it's its own meditation. All of my exploration is that it, hopefully, is my own and unique, but the context um, 
is not accidental. It really came from what I observed and learned um, from my father and his work. The reason we're having the show is a lot, you know, of my father. You know, like it's uh, it's not that I don't deserve it. I understand that that I do. You can't separate them, unfortunately, in this situation, and I can't have it a different way because my father is a painter since the late 40s and he goes before me. Um, you're seeing the work of somebody who devoted his life and became old and the master of himself. And then in my work you're seeing somebody discovering himself. And Nico is somewhere in the middle of that. It's just the beginning of an introduction.